So hello, let's get started. Very well, uh, very warm welcome to our project talks. Uh, in this session, we talk about the, the diversity of careers in project management. My name is Martina Huemann and I'm professor at VU Vienna and academic director for the Pro professional MBA project management. With me today is Katharina Segal. She is my counterpart uh, in the program. She is the program manager. Hello. Uh, hello. Most important, our guests um, today, we have truly an international group of alumni, uh, which with very different backgrounds, uh, career stories and skills. However, what they share is their interest in project management. So very warm welcome to Natalia, Fatma, Philip, and Christina. Hello, thank you. And Hello, thank you very much. And before I'm going to introduce you in more detail, I would just like to give an overview uh, on the session we have today. Actually, uh, the reason why we are doing the session is to showcase um, different career paths uh, because there is a a diversity, there's a richness. Uh, project management is an applied discipline. It's uh, about uh, managing projects. And so as there's so many different project types, there's also very many different backgrounds you can bring in. And uh, also project management can be considered as a, as a possibility to jump into a new career, to change yourself, to reinvent yourself. And uh, this is why I'm very happy to have uh, here uh, my four guests uh, to talk with them about their career stories. This will be the first hour of our talks and uh, it will be more or less a dialogue. So I'm just uh, asking them a couple of questions and we just go in a conversation. And after about one, and a, one hour, uh, we uh, will also give you the opportunity to uh, go into little groups and uh, you will have the possibility to meet our guests and to meet uh, Katarina and to meet myself. So we will have uh, these six groups and uh, just talk and we will make that brief twice, 10 minutes. And after that, we will going to meet again here in the plenary to round it up and uh, yeah, see if there's still anything uh, we would like to discuss. But now let me introduce uh, you to our guests. And I'm starting with Natalia. And Natalia, uh, I remember um, that uh, she, before she even applied for the MBA, she came to me to see me and was not sure if she would fit into project management. She was doing already projects and she founded in 2013, the first symphony orchestra in Austria. And she's, or, or her orchestra is specialized in film and video game music. The orchestra is called Max Stein Orchestra. And um, in this, conversation with her, I understood actually how many projects she is leading and uh, just establishing the orchestra is for me already uh, a project. So she has worked as an artist project manager for the world of Hans Zimmer. Um, and her, I would say her, um, her endeavors, her shows, um, or these shows have performed in more than 40 cities worldwide. So you can really see there's a lot of complexity involved that is worthwhile to be a professional project manager also to be able to uh, handle that. Our next guest we have here is Fatma. And Fatma leads currently the R&D department at Bühler Austria and he's responsible for 30 R&D projects with an annual budget of about 5 million euros. And you can see while Natalia is a composer for training, uh, Fatma is a 
engineering, physics, and he's passionate about leadership and project management. So actually he did a PhD at the Technical University in Vienna before he joined us in the MBA project management. Philip? Philip, nice to have you here. And uh, Philip uh, is the only one here, as far as I understood, who was born in, in Austria. Uh, all the others have very uh, different international backgrounds. They might uh, tell you a little later. And uh, Philip is marketing and customer experience minded project manager. And he's working in business development and product development projects in the service and financial industry. Last but not least, Christina. And Christina, you are also kind of uh, a person who has made a yeah, big transformation uh, already before you uh, joined the MBA in project management. You originally uh, studied languages, uh, you are a literature lover, uh, and then you became a sales expert. And finally, you're now a passionate IT project manager. Yeah, so a lot of reinventions uh, of your life, of your career, I would say. And of course, we're also interested in how you did that. So I think this reflects very nicely um, and showcases um, typical, atypical careers that you have in project management. And um, so actually, um, can we take off uh, this slide, please, so we can see our guests more uh, closely. And I'm starting with Christina. What does your business card say? Christina, you mute. First of all, yes, yes, thank you very much. So, <laughs> um, my current position is that of a project expert IT and digital projects at the divisional unit IT and business consulting for OMV downstream. Mm -hmm. Okay. Philip, what's on your business card? On my business card, it says head of business excellence for Austria and Switzerland mm -hmm. at Europa Systems. Mm -hmm. Fatma, what's on, what does your business card say? Yes. My business card says department head R&D for Bühler Austria and as of next month also deputy head of portfolio and product management. Okay, cool. Next career step, huh? Right. <laughs> Natalia, what does your business card say? Mine says managing director and founder, founder of the Max Steiner Orchestra. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe we just remain with you and my question to you is what is your background? Um, I studied a music composition for movies. And I started while I was studying uh, working as an arranger for the film music festival Hollywood in Vienna. And then I changed the position to music supervisor. And at the end, after my MBA to artistic project manager. And in parallel, I also founded my own symphony orchestra specialized in film music and video game music. So I did both parallel uh, as a freelance music supervisor and also uh, owner of my own project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Christina, what is your background? Yes, so I'm also one of those atypical project managers. I am uh, at heart a Master of Arts graduate. I studied languages, as you mentioned at the beginning. I started in Bucharest uh, studying Dutch and English literature. And after my bachelor's degree, I came to Vienna to continue my master's studies. And um, it, back then I was given the opportunity to work for the Dutch department of the uh, University of Vienna, where I studied first, uh, where I started first as a student assistant, and then I taught my own literature seminar. And it was back then uh, actually afterwards that I got an offer to start a PhD and become a university teacher specialized in literature. But it was already at that time that I started craving for some, let's say more tangible results or something a little bit more practical. Um, and I declined the offer and I started looking for a job outside of the walls of the university. Um, afterwards, I, I uh, started in a private language institute. Then I moved to Austrian Airlines. 
uh, where I was in uh, a sales and key account management um, uh, position on uh, focused on the Benelux area. And after two years at Ocean Airlines, I moved to OMV. OMV was looking for a Dutch speaker with sales background in order to help out with the implementation of a gas market entry project in the Netherlands and to get the business up and running together with the headquarter colleagues and with the ones uh, in Amsterdam. And after two years also in the sales position at OMV, I uh, moved to project management. So uh, I will tell you probably in a bit then how I got to, to become a project management manager at OMV. But I would sum up saying that after five years in total of uh, sales background and having studied languages, then um, I plunged into career change. It started with the MBA. And uh, yeah, this is where I find myself right now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And Philip, what is your background? Well, um, a little bit similar to, to Christina, uh, I started my education with an MA in, in journalism and, and, and communications, actually. So I worked in, in the media sector for some time. And then after university, I started to work in market research and um, for market expansion for, uh, for an assistance company. Later on, I joined the expansion I worked for and I uh, lived some time abroad in Istanbul to build up the, the local branch of the company. Plan was to stay there for a year. It became a little bit longer than that. It was a really interesting time. Um, afterwards, I was heading a multinational key account managing uh, management project, which was a more commercial project involving 20 plus markets. And yeah, and at that time I realized, well, maybe some more insights and, and, and resources regarding project management uh, would be really useful apart from training on the job. So at that time I started also my MBA and in parallel and now since a little bit more than one year I'm in head of business excellence in Austria and Switzerland for an assistance service company. What we're basically doing is 24-7 emergency services and what we call what we do at Business Excellence is lots of process improvement, but also system migration projects, improving customer experience with digitalization, automation of processes, and yeah, in between here and there, some product development. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great to have you here. Fatma, what is your background? Well, yes, as you mentioned before, I'm actually a scientist from education and from beginning on. I worked at CERN for 10 years, CERN in Geneva, this big accelerator machine, uh, but pretty soon, like my uh, cohort, like my cohorts before, I actually decided to move out of the of this field where I am at home, science, and wanted to do something else. But actually, I want specifically I wanted to go into industry. Now, I did a small half step before I went to a company which is half industry, half scientific center, a company Vira Neustadt. Uh, called Medostron. It has been, it has built a particle accelerator to treat cancer uh, patients, to treat uh, tumor. Um, and I worked for 10 years at this company as well. I started as a group leader, became later on the responsible project manager for the whole accelerator for a technical part. And later on also the lead of the full technical team of about 50 people. But then, as also my colleagues before, I decided I wanted to move out to, to do something else. The project was finished, successfully finished, and I decided to go for the MBA, especially with the project management specialization, and to move also from industry. And now I'm in a, a Bühler Austria, a company which is actually producing uh, food equipment and is market leader in it. And I'm leading a small but dedicated team. We are 11 people. And uh, um, yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's let's remain with you, Fatma, because you already mm -hmm. started talking about how you became involved in project management. Any further details you want to add here? Yes, actually, yeah, it was uh, as I mentioned before at Middlestrong. I at a certain point, um, I think it was with the time when the whole team was moving from Switzerland to Austria. Uh, there was a major reorganizational change, so a lot of people actually didn't move or decided to go somewhere else, or the, the opportunity was also taken to get rid of some people as well. Um, I was asked to take over the lead 
for that project. And actually, yes, it was a great a great opportunity for me. Um, it is a big project. We're talking here about 80 million euro investment over several years, but still um, with uh, 50 people working on that project. And uh, it is building a party accelerator from scratch. So yes, to say yes. Uh, however, it, I didn't have project management experience, I have to admit. So this was for me a complete new field, a jump into cold water. And uh, it was a lot of uh, learning on the job and I had to learn fast and I did and uh, managed to do, uh, to finish the project of course as well. So this was my first, first entrance into the project management and now I'm a big fan of it because I see so many uh, benefits. If you are doing projects, uh, it doesn't have to be technical only. Uh, Projects can be in a different variety, and we see it here uh, by, uh, by people who are presenting it here. So this is uh, this is uh, this is the reason why I, why I like project management. Yeah. So uh, that reminds me a little bit on the saying: the project manager is the accidental career. Mm -hmm. Was an accidental career for you, or was there some planning behind? It, there was. Um, well, planning, uh, I didn't have a big plan. There was an idea, definitely. There was, of course, I, I've i seen some things going wrong and I knew uh, that it could be done better. So there was an intrinsic motivation for me to do it better. So uh, this is it. This is the, one of the reasons why I was motivated to do that. Uh, the plan to do it, hmm, um, I think what... Uh, what I did definitely, but it was this on purpose or not, I don't know, was to actually showcase uh, to all the stakeholders involved in the project that the, pro that the part which I had, uh, which I was responsible for, to have it under control, to have a timeline there, to have the documentation uh, properly uh, arranged and, uh, doc and uh, filed, uh, to have your to have uh, eye on the budget, to have your people motivated, to inform people about your project or about the part of your project. So all of this probably made uh, the responsibles aware that I could be the right call uh, for the overall project. Okay, yeah. Thank you, Fatma. So Philip, how was it uh, for you? Uh, how have you become involved in project management? Was this planned from your side or did it happen? I think it's a mixture of both. So there was some years ago quite clear interest to, to, to improve my skills in, in that direction, but it did not come, let's say, overnight. So first I did a very basic um, course on project management some years ago, which was for a certain period of time enough to, to, to handle the, the, the smaller project, let's say. Uh, and then more and more it caught my interest and I realized there's much more to do and much more to learn and many things to improve, like Fatma said earlier. So I think it was more gradual development than, than um, a real, uh, let's say it's a decision and from tomorrow on I'm going to be a project manager. No, it wasn't that way, but really step by step uh, growing with it, yeah. yeah. Thank you. And Christina, when you left uh, the university and became uh, involved in sales, uh, have you thought about a project management career? No, not at all. <laughs> uh, but it was while I was working at Ocean Airlines, so while still being in sales, that I took up a business course in uh, that had to do a lot with project management, and I and I realized that that this is something that I want to do, that that I really like it, and this is something where I would see myself evolving professionally. And it was at uh, that time that OMV submitted their offer for the position in the key account management area that I also submitted my MBA application for the project management specialization. And I told OMV from the very first beginning that I'm interested in projects. This is what I see myself in the future. And even, even though it was clearly obvious for them that I will not stay long-term in that sales position, they, uh, they offered me the job because it required 
required a lot of project man a lot of project management skills as i was saying they were back then busy with this market entry project um and it was a subsidiary which was existing only on paper when i when i joined them and uh, slowly uh, for for two years i was busy with implementing it projects uh, specifically it systems relevant interfaces for for the discuss market entry project and uh, i was coordinating activities uh, with the colleagues from there and the ones in the headquarters and after a successful market entry project and the well established uh, dutch subsidiary are uh, around two years and i was getting closer and closer to uh, graduating from the mba program i decided to get in contact with the head of business consulting and projects at omv and interview him for my master's thesis uh, after i've seen a blog article written by him on uh, the project management community uh, within omv and petrom and I think that during the, that interview, this, this passion or uh, or how I was talking about project and this desire of, of mine of, uh, of becoming a project manager became quite clear to him. And what I didn't know at that time was that what I thought it was just a student interviewing a senior manage, manager about how they do projects at OMV, it turned out to be my own hiring interview. And uh, a couple of months later, I got a job offer in the IT and digital projects department, and it was an entry level position. So that was the very first step on, on having a, a career path or entering a career path in project management at OMV. Uh, it was uh, back then I was a project professional. And after nine months, I was promoted to the next led, uh, career ladder or career step, let's call it like this, which is called the project expert, where I find myself. And afterwards, in our in our case, we have project manager and afterwards, uh, it's a senior project manager. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, yeah, very nice, very nice coincidence uh, that he was looking for somebody and you were interviewing uh, him for your uh, MBA thesis, yeah? Yes, so. yeah, never crossed my mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, Natalia, um, I mean, yeah, being a composer and uh, going into project management might also not be so obvious. So how did yeah. that happen for you? It's similar to my colleagues. It was a very gradual step-by-step -step transformation. It didn't happen overnight. So I was... Uh, working, as I already mentioned, at the Film Music Festival Hollywood in Vienna, uh, working very close with uh, Hollywood composers uh, that came to Vienna for this festival. And they were uh, very um, happy with the Viennese quality, music quality, with, with the talent, with the professionality. And after one rehearsal, we went to have dinner and they asked me if I know an orchestra where they can record their next movie. And I was like, yeah, of course, I will I will uh, find an orchestra for you and I will arrange the schedule, like doing them a favor where to record the movie. And of course, I found, I thought about the main orchestras here, Philharmonica, Sinfonica, they are like top five. They were all booked. They are amazing musicians, but they don't have uh, space anymore. They are booked. And then I called to Germany. I have a friend there that recorded and um, soundtrack, a movie soundtrack with a film music orchestra in Germany. And I told him if he happened to know something in Vienna like that. And he said, no, there's no in Vienna. And it was like, how can, I, how can that be? We are in Vienna, like the city of the music. Well, there's a lot of orchestras specializing in Strauss or classical music, but there was none specializing in film music and video game studio musicians. And then he joked and he said, well, why do you do do one? And I was like, no. And then that idea started playing in my mind and I did it. And when and then we recorded in the Otakringer Brauerei here in Vienna, a promotional video. And then two producers saw me and invited me to Cannes to represent Austria from the music. So a Colombian person was representing Austria in Cannes. And that's where I found my first client, a uh, production between ZDF, the German production company, and ORF, the Austrian broadcast company. It was a, it was a cooperation, and they gave me our, our first contract. And then when I came to Vienna, I was looking for a lawyer. I need a company. I need a company. <laughs> I have a client and an orchestra, but I don't have a legal form. Okay. And then like that, I started having to deal with business things that I, of course, I never learned in my music background. 
I have conquered the music theory, but about business and legal things, no clue. So I kind of went with the, like a fireman, like turning off fires. I need to deal with this. I need to deal with this. And then three years after this struggle, learning by doing, I decided one moment, I need to put some theory. I want to have clarity. So I accumulated like 2 million questions. So when the MBA they started, I was like, can I ask, can I ask, can I ask? So I had a lot, a lot, a lot of questions and it was an amazing ride to have them all answered. So the main reason why I got interested in business was my life experience, bombarding with experiences that I, I reacted. And now after I know I did it well, my intuition kind of worked. But it's really amazing when you have a, a theoretical background and also sharing experiences with other, with other colleagues. And why project management precisely? Because I wanted, I had the feeling I come from a very abstract world and I wanted to have something like real in my hands, like real tools I can apply and real knowledge. I mean, of course, the music knowledge is also real knowledge, but more tangible parts. So to balance my two. Mm -hmm. Yes, experiences, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how did the MBA support you in your career? Well, the first thing was got of all the confusion questions, clarity. It, it was for, for me personally a, a, a private struggle because me being the, the founder and the managing director and doing all the decisions alone, um, I, I came to be the colleagues of my decisions to be their leader. So that change was already weird because we were friends from the university, but now I had another role and I needed some uh, new peers to learn that have also a leading role, what they do. And also the whole um, business questions that I had that like, the main thing was the, the confidence that I gained. I, I would say a lot of things was mostly personal for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, thank you for sharing this. Thank you. Uh, Philip, what, what uh, did the MBA uh, project management do for you? Well, first of all, it was really, I think, um, really helpful helpful to acquire know-how that I was looking for because doing an MBA um, I think it really widens your horizon because you have you are you're you're dealing with so many different subjects and lots of uh, many of them in parallel so economics uh, business plans marketing sales um, uh, things I never really dealt with like accounting to some extent, so it, it, I think it really widens up your 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 horizon, and this was really really great. And it also proved me a little bit that um, the things that I'm interested in, that I want to do, that that motivate me in my professional career, um, yeah, that those are the right things because I, I knew that um, with the know-how acquired, I can become, let's say, more more professional and also more. Um, yeah, what, well, how did you call it, Natalia? A, bit, a little bit more self-aware um, on, on, on the decisions and how to make those decisions. And all in all, it helped me because um, now I'm leading small teams, but um, I think um, also regarding leadership and how to derive decisions, how to communicate, it's now more important than ever in these um, uh, remote times, let's say. Um, yeah, and, and apart from that, uh, if you're lucky, you also happen to meet some really nice people. Yeah. Christina, what did the MBA do for you? Yes, a lot. I would say in a nutshell that the MBA sharpened my business knowledge, brought me specifically project management knowledge, brought me two jobs and helped me to successfully navigate navigate a career change from sales to project management. Uh, if I'm to refer specifically to the project management area, here I got a better knowledge of all the ingredients that make up a project from project initiation to handover, to identifying the right stakeholders, to drawing implementation plans, risk analysis, and 
and also one important thing is uh, being aware of my leadership style. I think uh, this is something really important and uh, without having gone through, through the courses together with my colleagues, um, maybe I wouldn't have been aware of. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you're, I think you're rounding it uh, nicely up. Uh, and I, I think uh, especially also the business core is most important for people that do not have a business administration background. So uh, meaning a professional MBA, the first part is doing a business core and then you specialize. And uh, all of you have already uh, mentioned that this uh, business part was also quite important to you in addition to the project management part. And I would assume, Fatma, you, you are also uh, very much uh, taking uh, a lot of uh, knowledge also from the, from the business core part, isn't it? Definitely true. Definitely true. I can agree fully to that. Be it, yes, um, you learn. It, it, I see the first year, the core part, actually as a crash course in economy study. So you learn the most basic things in quite detail, actually. Uh, and um, this helped me a lot, definitely, in my career as well. Be it just a nomenclature, so you can actually talk to your CFO and understand what he's talking about. Uh, this already helps. Um, so you can, you can get your points through, your, uh, your aspects through better if you know just the right words, just the right buzzwords to use. But this is not the only part that you have learned there in the core part. Um, I do also uh, appreciate the second year, which was for me, a, again, a crash course in project management as well. So I did come as a project manager into this, um, into this year, but uh, it was good to sharpen, deepen the knowledge which I already have, uh, which I already had, but at the same time also learn quite some new aspects. And I was surprised, uh, let's, let's call them tools. There were quite some useful tools, which I find dear and useful. Uh, one example, um, when I joined, <clears throat> sorry, when I joined a company, which I'm right now here, this was about two years ago, <clears throat> the R&D projects within the company were kind of mysterious. So the company didn't know what, what we were working on and which status the projects were. And uh, following that, of course, there was also some there was also some mistrust towards the R&D department. Uh, they are living in the high tower, they are not knowing, you know, not knowing what the business is about. So one of the first things which I did, and this is what I learned from you, Martina, is the project Venisage, which is, a, for me, a very useful tool. You, I, of course, you cannot take it as you have learned it, as is in the book. You have to adapt it to your current situation, and this is what I did. Uh, now we are doing it uh, every three years. Well, we did it every three years. Corona messed that up, so we had to stop uh, now for a year. Uh, we did actually one remote session as well. Now, uh, we, we would present up to six of our projects. Three of them would be presented in a big audience. So there would be a kind of, a, okay, more detail what we are talking about, uh, presentation style. And uh, then, other six would be presented in small stands, right? Where people would show up and bring some uh, things to touch and to talk to. And this proved quite, quite efficient for us um, as people who are working on the shop floor or in other departments could actually come and say, bring their input. So we would get benefit for the project. At the same time, we also increased our, uh, our uh, uh, image. And uh, with that, I have to say, uh, I did, it decreased my image, my personal image as well. So yeah, so you do learn a lot of uh, tools. It's up to you to find the right mix, which, which to use. And I want to uh, confirm what Philip said, uh, the MBA. Uh, this is not something which is beneficial to my career, but it was a hell of a ride. And I learned on many, many interesting people who are now dear to me and uh, yeah, I call friends. Yeah, I would say the Venissage is one of the highlights uh, in the second year in the specialization project management, uh, where um, all the groups can showcase uh, the training projects we have been working on. Because here the concept is that we are um, teaching you project management concepts, uh, sustainability, agility, digitalization, you call it. And uh, the question is then always, so how do you apply it 
um, how do you apply it to uh, put it really together into a particular project. So how do you streamline it to project management, to a particular context, to yeah. a particular training project? And this is why we are using the training projects as vehicles. And um, I remember, uh, Natalia, you did, uh, you, you actually uh, had uh, a project that you contributed as a training project. Uh, how that, did that feel? Oh, that was amazing. Beginning because I needed to explain non-artistic professionals what my project is about. So <laughs> a lot of the terminology I normally use, they were like, what is that? What is that? I was like, okay. So like I needed first to learn how to present my project to people that don't know anything about. And when I was in my own world, in the music world, and I thought everything, I take, I took everything for granted. They understand. I just needed to say everybody knows what I'm talking about. But explaining my colleagues because they, they, the, the, the task of, of this project uh, was that they are involved with with my project and we do all the project process and to, to the end. I needed to really deeply explain. And this explanation was a whole new world for me. It changed the way I see my project like this. And I was really surprised. I never expected that. I was like, okay, we will do this like I usually do, but explaining my insider ideas to people that had never had something to deal with music ever was a whole new experience. And then applying all the tools and methods to the music industry was another experience and adventure because as Fatma said before, you really need to adapt to situations. And the very cool thing about what I experienced was you could do with all these tools your own, your own recipe. Like you have all these uh, ingredients and you can make it your own and you can experiment. And then what, what we did, it was also a learning experience. And we did a lot of experiments. Will this work this way? No, better this way. So it was it felt very exciting because it was new every time and it was unique and it was uh, unexpected. So that kept the adrenaline going every time. Mm -hmm. I really liked that experience and thank you that I was able to do my project with my colleagues. <laughs> yes. yes, thank you for sharing this. Um, you're talking a little bit more now about uh, what you're doing right now in your profession and uh, um, Philip, I, I'm wondering what is a challenge and what is fun in managing projects for you? I mean, I think about what's, what's really fascinating about projects is that they, as, as I see it, they happen at the intersection of many different activities. So projects usually are about new technologies, they are about market needs, um, they are also about regulations, they are about legal um, um, yeah, maybe no legal guidelines, but last but not least, they're also about people. So it's that's what's really fascinating to to make it happen, and combining all these different elements and 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 align towards a common goal. So this is really um, what I love about doing project work, and they are complex. So um, yeah, I think if you're looking for an easy job, don't do it. <laughs> so it's it's um, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, if you like working with people and if you like challenges and if you are ready to learn new things day by day um, or at least deal with them and find the right specialists to help you with the new things that you're not an expert for, I think it's a very interesting career I can really recommend. Um, what's the challenge about it? Um, I, I think last year, at, at least for me personally, it was a really disruptive year, so we had lots of changes um, internally because things were changing due to the pandemic. We were working remotely, but this is nothing I have to explain to you. But also, um, as we had very many changes regarding requirements from our client side. So we're also doing client projects. The client wants us to do this or that thing. And scope was changing all the time. So we also experienced now that the project that we are, we are trying to plan for, let's say, since the beginning of the year, 
where one of our clients, a big Swiss insurance company, wants to implement a complete new framework, IT architecture. And as they are changing the architecture, we have to change our architecture as well to serve them with our products. I just got the information three days ago that they canceled the project. So initial go live was 1st of January next year, and now it's yeah maybe 2023. So we put lots of energy and time into that and, and trying to, to figure out how we can uh, make it happen. And then, yeah, it's just canceled. And this, I, th this I think, it's the biggest challenge these days. So the way we maybe it worked in the past that you have a change because project is always changed. So you unfreeze a con existing condition, then you do the project and then you finish, you freeze it again to a new state. This is not really possible anymore. It's it's constantly changing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The, this is very uncertain times. Yes, you're right. And uh, I think many industries uh, and many project managers are confronted uh, with uh, such a situation you're describing. But what I can see on the contrary, that there's a very high demand in project managers because many, many businesses, uh, they just need to reinvent themselves now. Yeah? And they a lot of transformation going on. Yeah? So I, I really can see a high demand in uh, the profession. Yeah, um, asking Christina, uh, what is fun and what is a challenge in your uh, daily work as a project manager? <laughs> yes, for me, um, I would say that the most the funniest part of my job is every time I uh, receive a new project or the, the part where I most have fun, let's call it like this, when I'm excited to find out uh, what we will be implementing this time, how we'll make a good impact again in, in the lives of our colleagues, of our customers. I'm uh, really curious every time I get a, a new project and uh, there's this brainstorming uh, sessions and workshop sessions during a session align with everybody. Uh, but I would say that most of fun I have after a successful go live and then for me this is the moment where i forget all the pain and suffering during the project and maybe all the effort and sleepless nights uh when i see that everything that we worked for uh it's there that we achieved our goals that there are no production issues or like very little production issues in that moment all my struggles and all the efforts put uh during the project they, they all vanish and all of a sudden i'm ready for the next project and for the next challenge. Yeah, and this is what, what actually gives me a lot of energy to continue to the next chapter. Yeah. Um, As I yeah. said, you're very passionate for projects. <laughs> uh, one can just feel it listening to you, how <laughs> you are. Yeah. Uh, Natalia, what are your challenges and what is fun? Well, the yes. challenge is what I talked before, but the other way around is explaining musicians what project management is. <laughs> So the very first thing is a lot of rejection, the uh, rejection. So anything that it's a little bit investing, a little bit more planning and structure is immediately rejected. So I really need to paint it in different ways, name it differently. If I say project management, they they probably hear like blah blah. So I need to say. Would you like to invest a couple of hours before the project starts so we can think about what we need? And that way is very difficult uh, to, to make them uh, feel the need that that is really important. For example, right now I'm working in a research project from Exil Composers and there's a little, little, a lot of tiny projects, but a lot of them at the same time. So it's another kind of difficulty. It's not one project with a lot of things, but it's a lot of projects with little things. Mm -hmm. And I, I try every time to lead to a structure, but it completely goes, they, they're excited and then goes. And then again, so I, I need to remind myself, don't give up, just again, remind that it's like this and we will do it like this. And this is how, and I also adapt my method. So I think it's like educating the music industry step by step, slowly, gradually, a lot of patience till it probably I, I inject the structure <laughs> into the music industry. And maybe in 10 years, I will tell you a different story. <laughs> so yeah. 
Yeah, what what comes to my mind is that you're actually giving them a rhythm. Yeah. 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 So so maybe you can just uh, yeah. use the picture that uh, this is the rhythm they need to yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> so it's pass and music and pass and music. <laughs> yeah. So the main thing is to to because they consider it not necessary. No, we don't need that. So that's the very main challenge. Try to, and I am so convinced that it's so necessary. The differences in in the in the clarity that you have and the where you what you can achieve with structure and planning is so much fun also than having to struggle like a like um and in the in the earth I feel like that and what is fun um what I love about the whole process of project management from the beginning of as El uh, Elena Cristina said like what I'm doing to the end is that it completely changes the perspective of what at the beginning and I find it so diff so interesting and so this shift of perspective of what it, what was planned and with what the outcome was in my experience is one of the most fun things uh, I, I have experienced. And also the way you can, you are pushed to adapt the methods, that, that it's not static, that mm -hmm. it's very adaptable. So mm -hmm. that's also very fun to, to, to watch, that it works. Yes. Yeah, Fatma, you say you agree. So what do you wanna say here? What do you add? Let me first start with the challenges which I see. Uh, well, there are many of them, right? Projects are complex, complicated, there are many challenges. But the one which bugs me the most is the uh, resource issue. You start a project, you, uh, you get promised resources, and then be it through repriorization, or be it the key person, the key resource has left the company or left the project or whatever, right? And then uh, you're stuck there, right? You, you, as a project manager, project manager, you're kind of completely helpless in the situation. You cannot solve it because you are not the expert. You are not the engineer in charge. You're just the project manager, right? Uh, so then, but you do uh, bear, you do, you do have the responsibility for the successful uh, finalization of the project in time and in budget. So this is then a very stressful situation. And to find a new person to come in, right? This is never a one-to-one -one exchange. And always very difficult, to, especially in engineering fields, to find a person who can uh, take over someone else's task which was done before. Mm. So that is challenging, definitely. But what I find fun about projects is uh, I see projects as a constant conflict between order on one side and pure chaos on the other. Like every I'm time, so agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, every I time you start a project, what do you start with, right? Okay, you have your scope, these are your tasks, and then you put up a nice timeline, you put a work breakdown structure, you have tasks assigned, and then actually on a theoretical level, your job is done. From then on, it should run. So, but then the real life comes in and kicks everything <laughs> up. And, uh, and then you are constantly struggling to make those two worlds meet. Right, and uh, for me, that's fun because projects are never boring. Yeah, yeah, I think this is a this is a commonality that uh, many uh, project managers have that boring is not good. Yeah, <laughs> it's not just good. having a standardized thing you need to do every day is not good. Yeah, so I I, I experience project managers as very passionate, very open minded and always uh, looking for a new adventure. And when I say adventure, then I mean uh, very much learning, learning opportunities, further developing opportunities, and also making a difference. Yeah, so making a difference for the company, uh, the own company or the company you're working with, uh, being very entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial, um, not only to the company, company but also uh, kind of uh, being very close to the to the end product actually of the project, yeah, and seeing what uh, what what you actually have achieved with your team, yeah? and this this seems to be one of the most important uh, motivators for people working in projects and especially project managers. This is this is not only my my observation, but this is actually also what our research says that. 
uh, this is why young uh, professionals are really, really uh, drawn into project management because that gives them really the, 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 the possibility of a little bit of freedom yeah, doing their thing, but also seeing what they're contributing um, and also seeing what they're contributing, not only to the company, but probably also to the society. So this societal um, wish um, or this, this wish to contribute to uh, society and not only to business that I see is increasing. And I think projects are a very good vehicle for uh, inventing the future so I'm also talking about the power of project in that respect. Yeah. So with projects, you're creating the future. Yes, yeah, thank you for being here with us uh, and our audience. And um, I'm now, before we go into the uh, small groups, um, I was just wondering whether you have a tip you can share with the audience um, how to become a successful project manager. Elena, do you want to start? You mute, Elena. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> I would say, um, apart from the necessary uh, know-how in project management, it's essential to focus on the relationships between employees uh, because uh, I think we've heard it several times during today's call that projects are mostly about people and, and, and about um, relationships at work and how, how you foster them. And uh, from my perspective, if you praise your team, if you um, thank them whenever you have the chance, uh, if you do not contribute to enlarging this distance between you as a project manager and them as work package leads, but on the contrary, looking for occasions to show them that you are part of them, that you are all in the same boat, uh, that you are all in this together, and at the same time supporting them whenever, whenever they need uh, in the way of removing obstacles which might stand in their way of accomplishing a specific task. I think uh, this would be, from my perspective, a a valuable tip and, and a warm re recommendation to the project management community, at least in my experience, this set, uh, this turned to be a, a good approach until now. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for sharing. Atma, what would you say? I fully agree with what Christina said. Yes, project management is about, um, to a big part, about leadership. So you need to, it's not, uh, you're not leading them through the line, but you need to find a way to lead a project team. And yes, uh, praising them and, you know, at, at a certain situation when needed, also pushing them a little bit is uh, definitely the right way to go. However, I do see one other aspect as well important to be a successful project manager. This is be always clear, not only you, but also your environment around you, what your project is about. Be sure to know what is the scope, what is the requirements of the project and what are the targets to deliver on. And if this is if this is not clear in the beginning, you're doomed to fail because the stakeholders will always have some hidden uh, expectations which you don't know about, and you will never be able to fulfill those expectations because you don't know about. Them. And um, so this is for me the most important thing: make sure that the project is well defined before you start, and don't allow anyone to change the scope within the project without adapting the project uh, uh, parameters like budget and timeline as well, additionally. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, yeah, maybe one more thing, uh, which is also important is uh, uh, talk about your project, not only to your project team members, but everyone in your company who wants to hear it and especially to, to the people who don't want to hear about it. Uh, mm -hmm. make, uh, make marketing, uh, yeah. promote yourself, promote your project and with the project, promote yourself. Yeah, I can. Just uh, agree on that, what you're saying. <laughs> uh, Philip, what do you want to add? What's your tip for the career? Uh, well, on top of what has already been said and to what I really have to agree, it, it was a great advice, um, is to have the right structures. So um, to uh, what Fatma said, okay, it's about the scope, that the scope should not be changed, or if it's changed, then um, it should only be done if it's, let's say, um, permitted by the sponsor or whoever um, uh, wants to make this project real. 
Um, but how do you do that? How do you deal with change within a project? And, and I think this is um, something you should consider very well, um, especially for, for bigger projects. If there are only two, three people um, or stakeholders involved, it's easy to deal with. But if you have 15, 20, then suddenly it can get a little bit dicey um, if changes are made and not well considered. So this is number one. Number two, it's a little bit related to that, is to be very clear about um, what success looks like. So if the project is done, what, what will be achieved? What's really the target of the project? Because um, the circumstances might change. So I think this is a question um, which, we sh which we should ask ourselves regularly. So is it really the right thing that we are doing with the project? And if not, okay, how can we adjust? Yeah. So to find the right balance between really long-term planning, mid-term planning, and, and quick changes that happen suddenly. And I have to say it again, but uh, only because it's very important, Christina already said it. Yes, uh, really, if you have a good team, let them know that you think that you have a good team. Thank you, Philip. Natalia, what's, what are your career tips? Uh, I saw it as a career, successful career, as a personal path through whole, the whole career, uh, not specific to projects. So my tip is um, to be find out what you're really curious about, because curiosity will lead you to places full of success. Uh, like uh, Christina said already, like, what is more fun? I'm curious what is this about? So... I think curiosity leads you to, to more interesting or more adventure and the more adventure, the more fun. And also um, throughout the whole career, I will really make a priority to believe in the ideas you have. So if, I, if an idea feels good, is really good, trust in the, in the good idea that you had and don't tell people too soon what your idea is about because they tend to uh, kill it with facts and reality and you need to let space for the imagination to develop like a plant so of course you don't have all the answer and all the facts and all the numbers and all the broad anything because it's an idea so treat the idea as an idea something abstract that is in the fantasy world and that is also a very important world because that's where new things come if we only check reality and facts, there are nothing new will be. So really, it's also good to have reality and facts, but integrate this other part, the fantasy and the imagination, and let it grow. And don't tell anybody till you have a real, real huge fantasy castle, and then you blow the bomb, poof, and then nobody will ask you the facts and the reality and so. And also don't take score too soon because when you're blowing this, <laughs> this imagination bubble, it takes time. So a, a bit of patience, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you to all of you for these great tips and uh, for getting uh, with me in the conversation. Um, so the next step will be that we are um, going into groups. Uh, with so. Thank you for being with us uh, in that session. So what we did is uh, we uh, showcased the careers of four very uh, successful professionals with a lot of different backgrounds and what they had in common is project management. So this is an invitation to you also to join us for the professional MBA project management. If you have any further questions, you can either contact Katharina Sekal or even myself, Martina Huemann.